Inside of the concentration camps of the Second World War, there were many people who found themselves inside of barbed wire fences. The camps were true hell on earth, and even a princess succumbed to the conditions of an SS camp. People came from all walks of life, and mass deportations took thousands of people each day to sites such as Bergen-Belsen, Ravensbrück and Auschwitz. Inside these camps, SS guards such as Irma Grazer, Elizabeth Volkerath and commandants such as Rudolf Hurst would brutalise and commit horrific crimes against humanity. Thousands were executed and millions were exterminated, and the Nazis did not care about the backgrounds of these people or who they were. There were some parts of the concentration camps which were reserved for higher-ranking prisoners, or those who the Nazis believed were worth a prisoner swap. But sadly, many of those people still succumbed to the diseases and pestilences and ill-treatment which was rife at camps within the Third Reich. There was one woman who belonged to a family that during the 19th century possessed the largest private fortune in the world, and a family who were considered the richest in world history. Elizabeth de Rothschild belonged to the Rothschild family, but inside of Ravensbrück concentration camp, she was brutally executed. Join us today as we look at her story, and remember as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Elizabeth de Rothschild was born in Paris as Elizabeth Pelletier de Chambeur. Her family were a very wealthy Catholic one, who emerged from the Burgundy region. She was from good military heritage, as one of her ancestors included a general in the Napoleonic Wars. She was known as Lily and was the daughter of Auguste Pelletier de Chambeur, who was the mayor of a small commune in southwestern France. As mentioned, her family were very wealthy, but in 1923 Elizabeth married Jean Kier Marc Edouard Marie de Becaremi, who was a Belgian aristocrat. They did have a son named Edouard, who was born a year after their marriage, but then Elizabeth had an affair and slept with Philippe de Rothschild, a member of the Rothschild banking dynasty who was also a Grand Prix motor racing driver, and also a bit of a wealthy playboy. The Rothschild family throughout history are considered to have been some of the most wealthy people to have ever walked on the earth. They were a Jewish family originally from Frankfurt, who today still possess huge business interests and have established a global enterprise. Today their businesses cover real estate, mining, energy and winemaking, and much more. Philippe de Rothschild was the heir and owner of the Chateau Marton Rothschild, the most prestigious vineyard and wine estate in the world at the time. Elizabeth slept with Philippe, and they conceived a child, but at the time of this child's birth, Elizabeth was still married to Jean Kier, and he even threatened to kidnap his wife's illegitimate child with Rothschild. However, Elizabeth would divorce Jean Kier in 1934, and then shortly after, Elizabeth and Philippe de Rothschild married that year in Paris. But as Elizabeth married a Rothschild member, she then was converted from Catholicism to Judaism, and the religious ceremony was conducted by the Grand Rabbi of Paris. Together, the Rothschilds also had a son named Charles Henry. Philippe would describe their marriage as one of great passion, but also enormous tempestuousness and despair. They seemed happy at times, but there were also times of great depression and anger. The couple's problems got worse following the tragic birth of their son, who suffered from disabilities and then died shortly after, and the pair then agreed to separate around 1939. But Elizabeth was a baroness throughout the marriage, and then she reverted back to using her maiden name. But at this time, the Second World War was breaking out, and Europe was plunged into the largest conflict the world had ever seen. Hitler was invading a number of countries, and he wished to expand his empire, and the invasion of France then came. It took in total six weeks for France to fall to the Germans, and then parts of the country were placed under German and Italian military occupation. German units pushed through the country, and there were huge casualties, civilian and military ones. But on the 22nd of June 1940, the Second Armistice of Compiègne was signed by France and Germany. It wouldn't be until 1944 that the country was once again liberated from Nazi control by the Allies. In France, the Nazis began to persecute the Jews, and there were around 49 concentration camps in use in France, where the Jews were sent. Many of these were sent to camps such as Auschwitz, where they were exterminated and killed as soon as they arrived. Jews were forced to wear the Star of David, and there were mass arrests. The mortality rate of Jews was lower than in other occupied lands, and some did manage to flee, but ultimately the fates of those who were deported were tragic ones and harrowing ones. 
But following the German occupation of France, Elizabeth and her estranged husband were captured and arrested by the Vichy government, and their vineyard property and lands were seized, along with all the wealth relating to it. Following their interrogation, they were then released, and Philippe did the smart thing and left France to move to England. Here he joined the Free French Forces, and would support Charles de Gaulle in his actions. But Elizabeth did not leave France. In 1941, the Gestapo arrested her on charges of attempting to cross the line of demarcation with a forged permit. This, in a sense, meant she was trying to flee with false papers, but there was also another rumour and story about her imprisonment. It was said that, in 1941, Whilst attending Elsa Schiaparelli's fashion show and her showcase of new designs, Elizabeth was sat next to the wife of a German ambassador to the Vichy government, Heinrich Otto Abetz. However, Elizabeth found this offensive and then changed seats, which was seen as a mark of disgrace, and it offended the wife of Heinrich Abetz. Following this, it's believed she was then arrested, and then after her arrest, she was then imprisoned at Ravensbrück concentration camp. This was an all-female camp, in which 132,000 prisoners would be housed inside of the barbed wire fences. It's believed that up to 90,000 people could have been killed inside of Ravensbrück, and the women here were forced to live with horrific treatment on a daily basis. They had to put up with the psychopathic SS guards who would whip and beat them, and also turn their pistols on them and execute those who they did not believe were working hard enough. One prisoner said, We were to die of misery, hunger and exhaustion. When we arrived at Ravensbrück, it was the worst. The first thing I saw was a cart with all the dead piled on it, their arms and legs hanging out, and mouths and eyes wide open. They reduced us to nothing. We didn't even feel like we had the value of cattle. You worked, and you died. Whilst at Ravensbrück, Elizabeth de Rothschild was simply just another prisoner to the SS guards there. She may have been persecuted due to her conversion to Judaism also, and this would not have helped her cause. She may have also been marked as a political prisoner too. The true story of Elizabeth's downfall and death and execution would be uncovered by her estranged husband Philippe. When he returned to France, he learned that the Gestapo had deported his wife to Ravensbrück in 1941, and that she had managed to survive there for a period of around four years. However, on the 23rd of March 1943, she died within Ravensbrück. It was claimed and reported that Elizabeth died from the huge typhus epidemic which was sweeping through the female camp in the final days of the war. This disease and pestilence was incredibly deadly, but Philippe, her husband, then made an even more shocking claim about her death and execution. When writing his memoir, he stated that Elizabeth was instead executed by being thrown into the oven at Ravensbrück concentration camp, alive. This would have meant she would have been taken to the crematoria, where guards would have forced her into the ovens, either under sedation or with her kicking and screaming. The SS did have history in this, as a number of former SOE female spies inside of a concentration camp were injected with a sedative and then thrown inside of a crematoria alive. Around this time in the war, the Nazis were evacuating mass transports of women and other prisoners, and many were being forced onto death marches, where they were then executed. They tried to remove and kill and silence as many prisoners as they could, and they would evacuate prisoners en masse to wipe out any information of their crimes getting out. It's possible that Elizabeth's reputation could have also led to her death and execution. But during the Second World War, Elizabeth de Rothschild was the only member of the Rothschild family to be executed or murdered in the Holocaust and during World War II. She was a woman who fell in love with an incredibly wealthy French baron, and who was a member of the hugely rich family that owned one of the most famous vineyards in the world. But Elizabeth was a woman who did experience difficulty throughout her life, losing a child and also having to deal with a problematic first husband. But she was sent by the Nazis to Ravensbrück, and it was within the barbed wire fences here that she either succumbed to a deadly disease or more horrifically was executed by being burned alive in the crematoria. Today her story is not the most well known, and it's one that deserves to be told. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.